We raise you high with our praise And as we worship, build your throne and as we worship build your throne and as we worship build your throne come lord jesus and take your place the lord bless us all In jesus name please be seated God bless you one more time. Hallelujah. I kept thinking about the things that I'll be sharing all through my session. And um, I prayed a very short prayer before I left my place of rest to come here. And the simple prayer was that the Lord will cause us, number one, to hearken to these things these truths that are coming forth from his word and then number two that god will grant us the grace to be practitioners of the same i guarantee you that if you listen and you pay attention to the things that every speaker who came here shared with you and then that which you are about to hear now within this brief session it will be impossible for your life to remain the same Please shout a loud amen. amen. Lamentations chapter 10 and verse 27. We'll start with that scripture tonight. Lamentations chapter 10 and verse 27. Let me turn to it myself. Lamentations 10. 27 3 27 i meant to say lamentations 3 27 i wish it was projected but then you can read it from your bible or whatever device you have okay i have it here it says it is good for a man that he bear his yoke in his youth it is good for a man that he bear his yoke in his youth the bible tells us that there is an advantage to bear your yoke means to begin the journey early to pay the price early when i saw the theme of your conference i was really very touched that a people can be that discerning to be serious about life and destiny one last scripture and i begin to teach ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 1 it says to remember now your creator remember now thy creator it says in the days of thy youth while the evil days come not nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say i have no pleasure in it remember now your creator in the days of your youth i want to challenge us tonight everyone who is here i believe you came by the inspiration of the spirit my charge tonight is to help us to be able to find purpose and to find meaning to life our world is full of purposeless people our world is full of angry people the rate of suicide continues to increase in our world even among young people because they do not find any reason or any motivation for living the rate at which people take their lives live very irresponsible lives tell that there is something about purpose there is something about destiny that they do not understand are we still together we look at our world and even our nation right now and there is a very disturbing escalation of violence terrorism 
and every one of these violent individuals who kill people burn homes destroy the peace and the sanctity of a territory every one of them was once a baby in the hand of a woman what suddenly transforms a baby into an evil man what suddenly transforms a vibrant baby with a glorious potential and a glorious destiny to become one who would cause mayhem and destruction to society now tonight very quickly there are five questions i'm going to be asking you these five questions are the questions that every man who must make a meaningful life and a meaningful destiny must be able to ask and to answer failure to understand the question and failure to answer this question would equal a life of frustration a life of defeat but happy is the man who is able to understand and answer these five questions if you can understand these questions and answer them you can be guaranteed that you are on your way to living a life of purpose a life of meaning and a life of high level impact can i tell you this i guarantee you that everyone on earth is seeking answers to these five questions the angry man who uses violence to communicate his aggression the young person who is frustrated over the issue of a job the student who is seeking admission the one who is trying to graduate the graduate who is looking for a job the married man in search of children the politician in search of a position everyone born of a woman is living for these five questions this is why you live this is why you breathe in fact it is a search for these five questions that brought you to be seated here right now tonight unfortunately most people spend their lives and their days and they are never able to ask and answer these five questions some may answer a few of the questions and have some measure of success and advancement but the lord himself is going to be asking us these questions tonight and my assignment is to ask you and also guide you to find answers can we do that within the few minutes we have pray a prayer whilst you are seated open my eyes oh god these are questions that pertain unto your destiny listen if you do not answer this question your children will pay for it you do not answer this question you may live a frustrated life happy is a man who is able to ask and answer these questions five questions that pertain to destiny that pertain to purpose in the name of Jesus Christ are you ready question number one the first question that anyone who intends to live an effective life just a little on the volume just, anyone who intends to live a life of meaning and a life of purpose must ask question one who am i this is a very simple but powerful question who am i this is a question that seeks to help you understand your identity there is such a phenomenon in our world today called identity crisis that if you do not know who you are life social media the sociological context will try to define for you a template about who you are that may not have been in your original script as designed by god who am i let's look at a few scriptures psalm 49 and verse 20 
please help us media let's work together so we can walk with time psalm 49 and verse 20 the bible says man that is in honor and understandeth not is like a beast that perishes one version says a man of honor who does not know will die like a beast in the field that means if you do not know who you are it is possible to live far below god's expectation for you simply because there is a problem with your identity in matthew chapter 16 matthew chapter 16 i'll begin my reading from verse 13. jesus christ was with the disciples and then he asked them a question when he came to caesarea philippi he asked a question saying who do men say that i the son of man am it was a question of identity they had worked with jesus for a few years at this time and yet they did not know who he was next verse please verse 14 they said some say that you are john the baptist some say that you are elias some say that you are jeremiah and some say you are one of the prophets and then he asked them he said now the question is to you who do you say that i am and he was shocked that although they were close to him eating together helping out in his crusades they didn't know who he was it was only peter who spoke and said i know who thou art thou art christ the son of the living god it took the disciples a long time to really know and understand who Jesus was in his earth work. The question I have for you is who are you? Do you just believe that you are a biological accident that just appeared as a union between a father and a mother to produce you? You are just an entity that makes up the space of the 7.6 billion people on earth many roaming aimlessly through life do you believe you are just a figure in nigeria census in africa census who am i is a question every champion must answer when you know who you are you will know who you are not let me give you two scriptures that reveal to you who you are first john chapter 3 and verse 1 powerful scripture first john 3 and verse 1 behold what manner of love the father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of god he says therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us in calling us sons of god do you know what it means to be a son of god it means one who came from god it means one who is like god in every sense of the word you look at the creation of man in genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 the bible says and god said let us make man we're answering the first question let us make that man in our image the image of god means his spiritual quality man everyone including you was made in the image that spiritual quality of god and then man was made in his likeness his likeness means his functionality to have two hands one head two legs and so on and so forth so man this man that is so confused moving around wondering what his destiny is about the bible says that man was made in the image and the likeness of god i'm no longer slave to fear i am a child of god that i'm no longer slave to fear 
I am a child. Listen, can I tell you this? Please look up. Many of us came from backgrounds where growing up they called you several names to the point that you do not even know who and what you are. They named you after your result. They named you after your failure. They named you after any, maybe any health challenge you may have. Many times in the Bible, you find out that people were named after their condition. A man sat at the gate of Jericho, at the passage of Jericho, and the Bible calls him Blind Bartimeo. That's not a name. Bartimeo means the son of Timeo. The blind man who is the son of Timeo. What a description. And you see, we live through all these different names that they call us. Some call you stupid. Some call you foolish. Some call you a cursed child because of the region you came from. And when it's now time for you to manifest destiny, all these names start clamoring around your head and you are unable to move forward. But you must answer that question tonight. I have heard what my father said I am. I've heard what my mother said I am. I've heard what my school said I am. I've heard what social media said I am. God of heaven, who am I? It's a question you must ask tonight. And you must answer. I'm giving you help in answering that question. I may not be a billionaire's child, you may say. I may not be a professor's child, you may say. I may not come from a privileged family. But I am a child of God. It's a very powerful statement. If there is nothing in your life that you think is worth celebrating, find rest in this description of your identity. I am a child of God. Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 to 16. Let me tell you what else you are according to scripture. Matthew 5 from verse 13. The Bible says ye are the salt of the earth. Please shout it after me. Say I am the salt of the earth. One more time say I am the salt of the earth. Now look up please. The assignment of salt. Salt has two basic assignments number one for preservation number two to add value or taste so when god says through his word that you are salt it means i cannot be a disadvantage to my world you are the salt of the earth a system of preservation and a system of value when you have this identity you don't walk around trying to look for groups to endorse you you don't try to look for friends and association to give you an accreditation god already called you an advantage the bible says and everything adam called it that was the name thereof it's up to you to agree with god and say i am truly salt and you know something about salt women Many of you are involved in cooking. There are times that if you miss some ingredients, the food is, is already, you can't, you can't. Are we together now? You have to cut some ingredients at a certain time. It is never too late to add salt to food. No, even if, it's, even if you make a mistake and you cook and the salt is not there, even on the table, you can still add the salt. And you will not know whether you added it before or after. The effect will still be the same. Say, I am the salt of the earth. Let no one bully you that you came too late. No. Salt is never too late. I am the salt of the earth. I bring preservation. And I bring value. The Bible says, Ye are the light of the world. Give us first. Yes, thank you. You are the light of the world. Verse 14 now. You know what it means to be light? Light talks of solution. Light talks of 
the absence of darkness and confusion and chaos so in addition to being sold he says to you that i am light someone prophesy say i am light a light to my family a light in ministry a light in business a light in destiny the definition of darkness is my world without me i am light and the bible says john 1 5 that the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not let me tell you this lack of understanding identity is why we have occult groups today because these occult groups create a narrative if you join us they say you are powerful there are many useless groups online offline many groups that are antichrist in context but the pressure to become what god already says you are has pushed people to mortgage their destinies i'm walking in power walking in miracles i live a life of favor because i know who i am walking in power walking in miracles i live a life of favor please hear me i don't care what circumstance led to your birth prepared or not i don't care the the context i don't care how bad your past had been i don't care what the situation is let god be true and every man a liar if he calls you a blessing you are a blessing if he calls you salt you are salt if he calls you light you are light prophesy to yourself in one minute that in the name of jesus i reject from my life everything god did not say i am that relationship is trying to prove to me like i am a non-entity my lecturers respectfully may have called me names that should not be maybe my parents called me names that should not be they call you the black sheep in the family they call you a useless person answer that question tonight i am greatness on my way to happen i am the light the light i am salt i am a child of god a co-heir with god and a joint heir with christ seated with christ in heavenly places far above principalities far above powers in the name of jesus please be seated the first question tonight is who am i i found this question and it gave me rest in my life I took time to study who I was and who I am and more importantly who I was and I am in Christ it gave me rest no pressure to prove any point no pressure to try to live to no 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 I don't define myself just by what I wear I don't define myself just by what I eat I don't define myself just by what I enter in terms of a vehicle or the house that I live in. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. It's just for me just for me Jesus came and paid it just for me just for me just for me listen you know the value of a thing by what is used to purchase it when you go to the market to buy things they are in, usually in grades maybe bags or food stuff they will tell you this one is thirty thousand. 
this one is 50,000 women they can bring out one jewelry and say this one is 50,000 then they bring out something that looks like what you can swallow and tell you this is himself to become a baby walked upon the earth for 30 years and died raised you up with him and some individual looks at you and says you are a failure simply because of your cgpa looks at you and says you are a failure simply because you did not come from a background that gave you some privilege can i tell you settle that question tonight i may not have all the things that men clamor for for now but i settle in this fact that i'm a child of god i am one with him and i am a wonder on my way to happen in the name of jesus christ question two what is the second question you must ask if you want to live a life of purpose a life of meaning where am i from a very simple but powerful question where am i from where am i coming from the first question seeks to solve the issue of identity crisis the second question seeks to solve the issue of your source and your connection it's important for you to know you did not just evolve from a fish to a man with all due respect to science it took the creativity of the God of heaven he brought you right from where he was he did not just spit you out of thin air you are not just a product of a chemical reaction somewhere where am i from joshua chapter 24 from verse 14 and 15 when you know where you are from you will know how you need to be connected listen please look up fish came out of water and it must be connected to water the birds must be connected to the air and the trees for their survival when you know where you came from and who you came out from you will know that you need him not just as a matter of tea and bread but a matter of life not knowing where you came from is why a lot of people have not handed everything over to Jesus and to serve the living God Joshua 24 14 and 15 now therefore fear the lord he said and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood please continue give it to us and in egypt and serve the lord verse 15 now and if it seem evil unto you to serve the lord he said choose you this day whom you will serve whether the gods of your of your father or the gods that were whatever it is all of those gods that are on the other side the gods of the Amorite but as for me and my house because I know where I come from it's a choice that I've made I will serve the Lord I need him as a matter of life and death the question where you are coming from will immediately put you in a position where you are not ashamed to be connected to source are we together there are many people today who act as if there is no God in heaven there are many people who act today as if they just appeared and evolved out of space knowing that man came from God means that man must depend on God and be connected to him to prosper is that true there is a saying that a river that forgets its source that river will dry up a destiny and a life that forgets its source will dry up the second question that God is asking you tonight and beckoning that you must answer is the question of your source your origin and your connection John chapter 1 from verse 6 and 7 very quickly let's hurry up John chapter 1 6 and 7 
the bible says there was a man help me read that scripture if you can see it one to read there was a man stop 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 there was a man sent from where not sent from Zechariah not sent from Elizabeth not sent from Abel Kuta or Lagos or Borno State or Imo State no there was a man sent from God when he arrived the earth they gave him a name and they named him John but the Bible says the man was sent from God question where are you from if you ever believe you are just a product of your father and your mother the frame that gave your spirit its habitation on earth may have come from your geography but believe me when I tell you you are sent from God that means you have to be connected to God to find fulfillment you can replace God with any and every other thing it will not give you fulfillment the Bible says God has put eternity in the heart of man it's a realm that only his size can occupy no matter what you do nothing else will ever fill that space is someone learning can I tell you when we make altar calls it is not just because we are saving people from going to hell this is more than an issue of hellfire you are bringing people to be connected to their source watch this this beautiful fan here is blowing and giving me cool air while I preach you disconnect this from the source you don't need to do anything to the fan it will stand here looking useless no matter what else you touch here the value that you get here is derived from the connection there this is very powerful our world today makes it archaic to be spiritual vocally spiritual and declare your connection to God we live in a world today where the more you seem to practice secular humanism and ignore the reality of the God in heaven the more you seem to be approved by the status quo of society I bring you a message tonight can I tell you every one of you seated looking at me you need God in your life not just as a system of escape from hellfire alone he defines the value of your life you are everything Lord you are everything you are everything listen I love the psalmist the psalmist loved God so much you would see him describe his value the value of God in his life where can I hide from your presence he says as the deer pants after the water brooks he says so my soul longs for you Psalm 63 says oh God you are my God he says early will I seek you my soul thirsts for you as in a dry and a weary land where no water is he said to see your power and your glory even as I have seen in the sanctuary let me encourage you my dear people never find it a thing of shame to declare your honor and your allegiance from the to the government and the God of heaven that is your source even if you are in the midst of people and your ringtone it rings and it's a song that honors God don't be too quick to offer it because you think it will bring shame for you no you must be vocally and unashamed about your love 
and your your acknowledgement of the god of heaven over your life let me tell you what the bible says in proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 it says trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding verse 6 it says in all your ways acknowledge him acknowledge your source acknowledge your source I acknowledge him always and forever no matter what he does in and through my life when men clap for you make sure you let them know that I am what I am today because I am connected to he that is was and is forever and can I tell you if God be for you if that God that you have so acknowledged be for you standing beside you like a mighty terrible one there is nothing that anyone can do against you if you're with me say amen, amen. question number three why am I here the first question is who am I a question of your identity number two where am I from your source and your connection and your allegiance question number three now why am i here this is a question of purpose and destiny why am i here hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 let's hurry up so we can pray hebrews 10 and verse 7 very powerful scripture then said i lo I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will oh God so I have come according to the script of a book that is written I'm not just one who is moving around and hoping to find something to do with my life there is already a script about my life my assignment is to find it and walk in keeping with it John chapter 4 and verse 34 hear what Jesus said after his discourse with the woman at the well when the disciples came and met him here's what Jesus told them my meat that is my satisfaction is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish it you can start and not finish To do the will of him that sent me and to finish it please look up my dearly revered mentor whom i honor even in his death dr miles monroe one of the things that he taught me and taught the body of christ is that the wealthiest place on earth today is not the gold mines in Congo and parts of Africa is not the oil wells in the Middle East that the wealthiest place on earth today he called it the cemetery where people died with visions that never came to pass books that were not written facilities that were never built men and women who were destined to make maximum impact in their generation some of them went as robbers and died in shame some of them died cheaply because the devil wasted and ended their life can i tell you this if you want to live a meaningful life you call this conference being intentional you must answer that question why am i here John chapter 1 where we read earlier verse 7 tells us why John came and this represents the universal mandate of every believer he says the same came for a witness to bear witness to the light that all men through him his witness might believe whether this will happen through ministry whether this will happen through business 
and entrepreneurship whether this will happen through leadership whether this will happen through politics and governance whether this will happen by being an academician it does not matter the geography of the witness the same came for a witness to bear witness to the light that all men through his witness might believe The first serious book I remember reading, of course, aside from all of the manuals and the rest that you would get, um, handbooks, you know, in the seminary and all of that, the first serious book that I remember intentionally reading, reading for the purpose of my destiny, is discovering your purpose. There had been many other books, devotionals, and other books that I remember reading. But I didn't pay attention to them. For many of them, I just read them for reading's sake, in all honesty. Just to fill that void of spirituality. But the first book I remember, sitting down with a notebook, side by side, and saying, I want to change my life. Things cannot be like this. When I found that book, I was already making some level of impact but I wanted to be intentional about my life and it changed my life forever listen to me if you cannot tell me why you are on earth in one sentence you do not know why you are here as simple as this looks you will be surprised that there are so many people who do not know why they are here most people allow society to define their relevance per time and per season so a student now soon you'll be a graduate or you're already a graduate then the next thing in your agenda becomes to get a job then raise a family then raise children then try to manage some kind of sicknesses that come from depression and middle age then you die it's not a wise way to live you can live with intention ah. dependable dependable God it doesn't matter what comes my way you are still God this is the part of the song I love intentional intentional God everything is working out for my good. hear me he's intentional about making everything work out for you according to Jeremiah 29 and verse 11 that I know the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord they have thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end you must be intentional about discovering why you are here some of you after this conference you need to go to a bookstore and go and get materials that help to define your purpose for existence question four very quickly what can i do oh powerful this is a question that seeks to help you understand your abilities your giftings and your potentials question one who am I question two where am I from question three why am I here question four what can I do let me tell you what you can do Philippians 4 13 Philippians 4 and verse 13 everyone read it loud and clear if you can see it. ready one to read I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me Acts chapter 13 and verse 6 what can I do I can't be a non-entity here 
this is identifying your giftings identifying your potentials dr miles munro would define potentials as your inherent abilities abilities that are locked up within you you don't have to create or invent them you only develop and deploy them acts 13 6 did i get that right please look for it for me and david after he served his generation that's what i'm looking for he slept with his fathers after he served his generation whilst you're doing that let's go huh? 13 36 i missed one figure here please give us 13 36 same acts 13 thank you that's the scripture i'm looking for read with me please one to go for david after he had served his own generation by the will of god fell on sleep hold on that means you are not permitted to go until you bring that which is locked up within you and you serve your generation with it discovering your place in life is important but discovering the tools now please look up if i wear a lab coat and you see me hang a stethoscope on my neck you would most likely call me a doctor is that true if you see me wear an engineering helmet and holding a tape or holding something around you will call me an engineer if you see me with a t-square and a drawing board or some laptop using autocad you most likely say i'm an architect or a builder your abilities are pointers to your potential you can know where you are going by what tools you were given you can call somebody with a hammer and a nail a doctor he most likely may be a carpenter what can i do what do i have in exodus chapter 4 from verse 1 and 2 then we jump to verse 17 please write it and, and watch this carefully exodus chapter 4 the lord appeared to moses and the bible says and moses answered and said behold they will not believe me i have found where i'm to go i know my assignment my assignment is to be a deliverer but what tools will i use please keep that scripture there it's not enough to find your assignment you must know the tools that will make for your efficiency the bible says they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice for they will say the lord had not appeared unto thee next verse verse 2 and the lord said unto him please read with me everybody want to read and the lord said unto him what is that in thy hand and he said a rod god will never send you until he put something in your hand that rod for someone that rod is your ability to sing for someone that rod is supernatural intelligence for someone that rod is leadership acumen for someone that rod is physical strength for someone that rod is the ability to be so trusted that that integrity and dependability it's time for you to take that rod he's put in your hand because the king's word and the king's duty and the king's business requires haste go to verse 17 of exodus chapter 4 he says and thou shalt take this rod in your hand wherewith shalt thou do signs as you are going to fulfill purpose your potential that will be what you will use to be a blessing to people can i tell you this please look up i remember many many years ago getting a sheet of paper and writing a list of my potentials when i found out what i'm teaching you now i 
had just in fact I, i'm not even sure i'd started ministry i wrote it down i remember i still have the book old book but it's there let me tell you the things i wrote i wrote singing i wrote creativity i wrote counseling i wrote the ability to teach all of those things there is none of them that is not in use in my life today can i tell you this everything that you will use to serve the purposes of god is already within you everything david had became the weapon if it was if it was the the courage of a warrior and the ability to sling he used it to kill goliath if it was music he used it to drive a spirit out of Saul. can i tell you don't waste anything god gave you let me give you an assignment write out this night make it an assignment everything you know that constitutes an advantage in your life write it my dear sister if god has given you beauty don't be shy and say beauty do i write it go and ask esther it was beauty that took her to the palace and now she was able to represent the purposes of god everything god gave you forget the abuses that happen here and there don't let men laugh at anything god gave you gentlemen if god gave you stature and wisdom know that that is a tool for your assignment if you don't use it for the kingdom the devil will help you use it to destroy others can i tell you this my dear friend the five points and the 4.5 you keep hitting don't you think it is a waste your cgp is a revelation that god put something in your head that will be needed somewhere in your destiny believers and especially in africa we are masters at despising what god gave us we keep admiring things in people that do not have half of what god has given us can i tell you nobody will celebrate your gift that you don't believe in you have to believe in it first colonel sanders you've heard about him can talk it fried chicken that man was a military man but he had passion for cook for cooking generally and he came up with a recipe a unique recipe after he had retired from the army he said i can't waste my life like this my life is not just to be a military man and he came up with his recipe that's what better what you call kfc today kfc was a man who made up his mind that he would die empty listen to me as i look at everyone here tonight i'm not just seeing men i'm seeing businesses i'm seeing books i'm seeing institutes i'm seeing evangelists i'm seeing anointings i'm seeing mantles i'm seeing graces can i tell you this hear me some of you your grace to preach someday when the generation of our fathers have gone some of you who are seated there you will be the one standing here and you will you will recap this thing you will say 30 years ago when our fathers were still here please don't disappoint destiny through carelessness make up your mind that everything god gave me today miles munro has gone but some of us remain his students and extensions of his conviction Is God speaking to someone? I love the hymn that says, I'll do as it beats me, whatever the cost. I'll be a true soldier. Some of you don't remember those hymns again. The writers were people who wrote with understanding. What can I do? There is nobody seated under the sound of my voice who is empty. 
what do you have in your house second kings 4 the woman said nothing except she did not know that what she ignored was what had the power to bail her out can i tell you this your reward in life will be based on your discovering your developing and your deploying your gift let me repeat your reward in life will come as a result of discovering developing and deploying your gifts i don't do ministry for money i don't do ministry for fame i don't do ministry for honor i don't do ministry for recognition i do ministry because i love jesus and i found it as a divine mandate over my life but i tell you sincerely my dear people most of what many most of what people will look for in their lifetime in discovering developing and deploying the giftings of god he has brought them to my life so cheaply that sometimes i wonder i say is it true that life can be this cheap you don't know how cheap life can be till you are in the presence look no matter how a fish tries to fly it can't do well flying there are dolphins that try to fly but they go back as a reminder that you were designed for the sea there are birds that try to step into the water can i tell you this you are a master when you develop discover develop and deploy your gifting there are gentlemen handling this camera right now as anointed as you think i am it is not my place if i go and push this man and i say you don't know what the anointing can do and i hold that camera you may be annoyed by what you are seeing you see that because it is not a gift it is not an ability i've not invested in developing it and i'm not deploying it finding your gift is only one part of the equation listen to me there is a difference or there is a relationship between competence and confidence you will remain in shame for the rest of your life until you find something that stands you out listen end this journey of competition fighting getting angry there is no space for that kill that any space for those things in your life and fill it up with relevance that brands you by discovering your place you never see planes clashing in the air because of space traffic only happens on land but once you are in the air there is space for every plane no matter how big it is you never see traffic at sea like a big these giant ships that carry cars that have almost skyscrapers built in them and yet they move freely at sea can i tell you this there is a space for you let your gift take you there the bible says the gift of a man are you learning something tonight the gift of a man someone shout i am gifted let the devil hear it say i am gifted let your destiny hear it say i am gifted let your past hear it say i am gifted there is something i have that my world can celebrate jesus for find your own many have found theirs and it took them from levels of shame and reproach to enviable destinies let me give you an assignment please when you go back go and write everything you know in your life that constitutes an advantage don't let anybody laugh at you no matter how stupid it sounds write it God you gave me long hair write it God you gave me an ability to talk once I open my mouth write it God you gave me this beautiful voice to sing write it God you gave me this grace this charisma for leadership 
every time I'm in the midst of people they seem to listen to me write it I will show you what you are doing is found in Philemon chapter 1 and verse 6 that the communication of your faith it says are we together I want us to read it together Philemon chapter 1 and verse 6 that the, if you can't find it let me just quote it that the communication of your faith it says may be effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus have you acknowledged the good things in you if they tell you you have a big head is that the only thing you have they must say the other ones you have too don't don't dwell in negative things and say oh I have a big head I am short I am tall let me tell you this focus anything you focus on grows and magnifies in your life you focus on failures you keep wishing things that will never be you be proud of being you this rod you have given me to the nations we go oh God I will take that rod of healing that rod of your word that rod of leadership that rod of creativity let me prophesy to someone in the name of Jesus the son of the living God beginning from tonight may your rod begin to speak for you in your campus in your place of work may the rod the ability the gift the talent that God has put within your spirit receive grace to identify it receive grace to develop it and receive grace to deploy it hallelujah please sit down we're wrapping up you see in africa a man can be in his 20s and they may never allow him to develop his gift why they will say he's a child there is a wrong narrative you must change in africa you see people getting old and not blessing their world with any gift they say they are children you go to places like china and you will find young children who are barely teenagers 11 12 discovering things that are changing the world because the atmosphere allows for creativity don't be like jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5 jeremiah said i am young verse 6 when he said right from your mother's womb i call you and i ordain you to be a prophet to the nations jeremiah said ah lord behold i cannot speak for i am a child don't say i'm a child don't give god excuses when you read exodus chapter 4 at a point god became angry with moses because moses kept giving excuses lord i am a stammerer lord i am this and god said, who created the mouth he said keep quiet moses who knows moses would have received his healing but he did not believe that God could heal him. And he said, all right, let Aaron come and be your spokesman. Since you think that the mouth I gave you is useless. Can I tell you? Every time you ignore what God has given you, God will transfer that grace to someone else who can appreciate it. It's true. Go and read your Bible. Matthew 26, the parable of the talents. See what happened to the man who ignored his own talent. When he brought it, he said, I know you are a hard man. You like reaping where you did not sow. Look at what you gave me. And he said, no problem, give it to me. He took it to the man who identified it. There is nothing God gave me that will not be used to bless my world. If he gave me a voice to sing, I will sing. If he gave me a brain to think, I will think. If he gave me a lips to declare his grace, I will declare it. If he gave me an anointing to heal, I will heal every sick person I find. If he gave me a grace to cast out devils, I will cast out every devil I find. Everything you have given me, oh God, let it be used for your glory. Is someone learning tonight? Question one, who am I? Question two, where am I from? Question three, why am I here? Question four, what can I do? Question five, where am I going? The fifth and the last question you must answer is a question about your destination both here and when this life is over. 
is the fifth question that any man who wants to live a life of meaning and purpose and relevance must answer first corinthians 15 19 please write it down first corinthians 15 19 let's read together if we can see it. ready one to read if in this life only we have hope in christ he said we are of all men most miserable that means in all of your voyage you come to a point where you realize that someday this life will be over no matter how young you think you are no matter how old you think you are even the baby that was born today will get to a point where their lives and their destinies wrap up whether it is the day that you see him or the day he sees you the day both of you meet that is the end of your chapter here all my days on earth I will await The moment that I see you face to face For nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry treasure of my heart and of my soul sin my weakness you are merciful redeemer of my past and present wrong you're the holder of my future days to come so who is like you lord in all the earth much less love and beauty endless war nothing in this world can satisfy jesus you're the calm that will run dry jesus you're the cup that will Yes, you are the cup that will run dry. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. You are closer to your the end of your day now than you were when you woke up this morning. You may not like to hear what I'm saying, but it's the truth, whether you like it or not. For every time you celebrate your birthday, realize that you're celebrating two things. Number one, you are celebrating the reason for which you were born not just the day you were born you are celebrating the reason for which you were born number two you are acknowledging the fact that time is going celebration of birthday is an acknowledgement that i do not have forever on this earth can i tell you it is my desire and my prayer for you that by the time he calls you will not go in shame and pain and start giving excuses and say god but i did not finish this till he returns or calls me home here in the love of christ till he returns or calls me home here in the love of Christ can I tell you this we're about to pray everyone please listen to me very carefully everybody who is gone today was once in someone else's funeral everybody who is dead today once stood before a dead body can i tell you this by reason of the work that god has called me to do i have seen many funerals in my life i have seen people that i love i get news about someone's transition an average of every day because usually when people die they reach me in hope that maybe let's see if we can pray for the person to come back 
so i get text messages a prominent man in this nation who was just appointed not too long just passed on to glory and i remember my phone text messages please let's pray for this person can i tell you this every one of you including the person talking if christ tarries one day this life listen carefully only what i've done for love's reward will stand the test of time when it's all be said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what i've done for love's reward will stand the test of time lord your mercy is so great that you lose a weakness and find precious joy in married clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life is gone listen There are many who have gone before us. Some of them started this year with us. In fact, some of them were alive last week. As at last week, if I preach this message, they would think they still had 30 years, not knowing they had seven days left. Only God knows how many days we have. Ours is to continue to declare long life so that we can serve his purposes. But I repeat that song again. Till he returns or calls me home here in the love of Christ. I now listen carefully. For those who have answered this question, you don't fear death. You will live long ago. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. But the reason is not because of fear. The reason is because you need time for your assignment you must get to a point in your life where like paul you can say for me to live is christ but to be absent in the body is to be present with the lord i came here tonight as led by the spirit of god to ask you these five questions we're about to pray listen for some of you question five god asked certain people question five at the start of this year they refused to answer now it's too late now hear me please what i forgot to tell you is that all these five questions you cannot answer them when you are gone you are only given a chance to answer them within the frame of your lifetime I bring you good news i hope it does not sound like bad news the time is ticking you would have answered these questions last year but you ignored it his majesty has brought me again to ask you one more time question one have you found who you are in christ question two have you recognized your source have you recognized your connection? Question three. What's question three? Where are you from? And why are you here? Please go back and ask that question. Why am I here? I'm not just here to escort others, clapping for people while they are making it. Question four. What do I have? 
or what can I do what can I do I may not be able to do everything is not needed but the one thing that God has mandated me to do can I tell you this I vowed a vow with my life that as far as it depends on me I don't claim to know everything I don't claim I can do everything yes in Christ but as far as destiny is concerned I have my allocation I vowed a vow that I will not fail my generation can I tell you this you are listening to me today because many years ago I was intentional about my life I made up my mind that I was not going to waste my time roaming around earth stop wasting your time in jealousy in bitterness in competition and begin to focus on the matters of destiny and don't let the devil lie to you that you are small don't let the devil lie to you that you are young we'll sing one more hymn and then we'll stand stand up stand up for Jesus you know that hymn ye soldiers of the cross lift up his royal banner it must not suffer loss from victory unto thee his army shall he lead till every foe is vanquished and Christ is Lord in thee two prayer points I'm going to leave you for the next two minutes our time is gone I don't know how you are going to cry before your God of heaven forget about whether I'm a preacher i'm a student fellowship president throw that one behind cry for your destiny in the next two or three minutes cry for your destiny please pray please pray please pray answer these questions in prayer it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. Let mercy find me tonight, O God. Someone is praying. Who am I? Where am I from? Why am I here? What can I do? And more importantly, where am I going when this life is over? Five questions you must ask and you must answer to live a life of meaning and a life of purpose. One more minute. Cry before the God of heaven. Shateke parakoshka librande getes Empra ketekete pakata pranda katos kete palatos Someone is praying As you pray remember your generation They are looking up to you As you are praying May God open your eyes to see the crusade crowd that is waiting for you when you develop that gifting of God. See the hospitals that you will build as a result of living a purposeful life. See the lives that will say thank you that you were born.
Abeketekos, Embrakatosh Katelekata. Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us, and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and lift the way that you lift. Set our hearts on you. So you'll do what you do. We need a move. This is a move. This is the future of four square. Praying and remaining. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point and I speak over your life. Father, I receive the grace not to fail my generation. I receive that grace. Whatever it will take, I obtain grace. I obtain grace. If it takes prayer, I will pray. If it takes fasting, I will fast. If it takes studying the word, I will study. Lord, I will not fail my generation in business, in politics, in ministry, in family. Keep praying, you have one more minute. Shalekebereko shalakata Embra kateka teka 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 telepatusia In the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus please do not forget what you learned tonight go and listen to this teaching again and answer these five questions like a student would answer an exam because if you fail this exam it's not just a carryover you will have. If you fail this exam, it can cost you your life and your relevance. Let Something happens when I call the name of Jesus. Something happens when I call the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in your name. There is healing in the name of Jesus. Healing in your name. There is breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Breakthrough in your name. There is anointing in the name of Jesus. 
anointing in your name. There's dominion in the name of Jesus. Dominion in your name. Things change when we call the name of Jesus. Chains break when we call the name of Jesus. Captives are set loose when we call the name of Jesus. There is a breakthrough when we call the name of Jesus. Anointing comes down when we call the name of Jesus. That's why we love your name. We love your name. Come on, in the next five seconds, I just want you to love on the name of Jesus. In your own words, in your own love, just love on the name of Jesus. Tell him how much you love him. There is power in your name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. While standing, I just want us to truly, truly honor the man of God and his wife, Apostle Achidina. Thank you, sir. I truly honor you. Honor Father, we ask you for understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please be seated. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 20. I just request that you lend me your attention for the few minutes that I will have to share the word of God. I believe in the power of the word and you may have heard me teach that the word of God in itself does not change the word of God in itself does not bring any miracle Satan has never been afraid of the word of God Satan is afraid of what the union of the word and the faith of man can do the Bible in the parable of the sower says that the seed is the word of God and Satan himself came and took the seed and it did not have any effect on him the word had finished fasting filled with the spirit and the first person the word meets is satan and not even proximity with the words care satan he was conversing with the word and it did not destroy him the word on its own does not create any effect it is the supernatural activity of the faith of man that comes through understanding that causes the word to be potent is God blessing us already and so conferences like this are primarily please pay attention they are primarily encounters with the word that means that the dominant spirit that should flow in a conference like this is the spirit of wisdom and understanding capacity to comprehend because um, dominion as you have learned I believe and you will be learning is a product of understanding in this kingdom your life revolves not around your desires but around the understanding 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 one of the biggest miracles that can happen to a believer is the miracle of understanding much more than the healing of your body much more than um, 
the greatest deliverance is not even the casting of demons out of you but the deliverance that is preached he says to preach deliverance to the captives there is a level of liberty that does not come just by conducting prayer it comes by introducing truths that have the ability to alter your understanding and um, in Isaiah chapter 60 when you read the Bible says arise shine and there is a reason time is not the reason arise shine and it gives you the reason it says for your light is come not your light is around it's always been there but the day it comes to you then you will arise amplified puts it in an interesting way it says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you he says rise to a new light you connect this scripture with ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 the prophet was beckoned upon to rise and he did not have the strength and the capacity to rise and then verse 2 says and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and it set me upon my feet people do not rise just because they are tired of sitting it takes an agency of the spirit to lift men to higher dimensions and higher pedestrals are we together yeah so this conference is a system of upgrade organized by the man of god and the leadership to shift us not by desire not by the passage of time but by introducing truths and opening them up so that we comprehend we're going to pray just one prayer before i continue cry and ask the lord for the miracle of an understanding heart is a real miracle is a real miracle please pray It's a mere, real miracle. Please pray. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 is the Lord God Almighty. You're the Lord God Almighty. My life is full of your glory. Ah. This house is full of your glory. And the people say, Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 you're the Lord God Almighty. His let it rain, rain in us. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let the weight of your glory for <sighs> Acts chapter 20 and verse 32 says the apostle is teaching and he says I commend you to God listen to an apostle teaching now I commend you to God and then number two I commend you to the word of his grace and he says that it has capacity to build you up and then to give you 
an inheritance among them that are sanctified so it's a handover service i hand you over to god and then number two i hand you over to the mysteries of the kingdom a body of spiritual knowledge and he says i can know you have accessed this truth by two results number one i see your capacity that you are built up and then number two that it can deliver to you in experience it is your inheritance but it must be delivered to deliver to you not another man's inheritance it is your inheritance but it must be delivered through understanding paul teaching the church in ephesus chapter 1 and the third verse he thanks the god of our father and then he says which had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ this is paul teaching now he says that god has blessed us with all spiritual blessings all spiritual blessings in christ so we are not in the dark as to the benevolence of god his 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 determination to see the saints walk in the fullness of his life his power his possibilities is not something that the saints should doubt the bible is is full of god's propositions is full of his his commitment to the saints scattered all through scripture is god's vow his covenant his commitment to see to it that the saints walk in the full expression of the reality of the life of god are we together now it matters as simple as it sounds it is the premise upon you see faith is built upon knowledge and understanding until you are aware of the will of god colossians chapter 1 please if you read from verse 9 and 10 paul is teaching the church in Colossae, and he describes the dimensions of knowledge that he seeks for them to be filled with colossians chapter 1 when you read from verse 9 he says for this cause also is projected since the day we heard do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye be filled with three things number one the knowledge of his will so the apostle desires that we be filled that means your life will be barren if the knowledge of the will of god is not captured in your christian experience number two he says to be filled with all wisdom do you know why he said all wisdom because wisdom like love has dimensions and that he wants every dimension and facet of wisdom to be captured in your christian experience and then number three he says spiritual understanding so he's praying that the church be filled with the knowledge of the will of god number two to be filled with wisdom and then number three to be filled with spiritual understanding and i believe that this is one of the the desires in the heart of the man of god even for this conference hebrews chapter two let's see how far you may sit thank you thank you you may sit thank you hebrews chapter two please Paul again is teaching and he now borrows the expression that the psalmist communicated many years ago and this is where I want to build my teaching on tonight please I want just lend me and lend your destiny your attention are we together now let's go to verse 6 the sixth verse Paul is teaching and then he borrows from the psalm of David he says but in a certain place we know where that certain place is he said he testified saying what is man that thou art mindful of him not the son of man that thou visitest him next verse it says thou hast made him a little lower than angels the word there is elohim it's not angelio is the word god you have made him a little lower than god are we together now and he's just speaking in terms of the the stratification of sovereignty he says that you have made him a little lower than god then he says you have crowned him with glory and honor and you have set him over the works of your hands you want to understand this you must understand the blessing of joseph this was what potiphar i mean pharaoh 
the pharaoh set joseph over the work of his hands and said that in nothing you are greatest except by office so the bible says in that similitude he set him over the works of his hands and then he says that um go to the next verse please thou has put all things in subjection under his feet and then he says for in for in that you put all things in subjection under his feet he left nothing everybody said nothing say it again say nothing that is not put under his feet that means everything was put under the feet of man but here is our discussion everybody say but one more time say but but now stop there let me teach on this but now this is a very powerful revelation there are always two dimensions in the dealings of god with men please listen carefully there is the prophetic dimensions of the speaking and the dealings of god realities from his standpoint in god's standpoint and in god's world there is no past present future that reality does not exist there's no such thing as tomorrow i will see no god does not have a tomorrow he is not alpha and omega the word and was an error in translation he is alpha omega he's not the beginning and the end no you see him at the beginning and at the end at the same time listen carefully if there is a time lapse in god then he cannot be omnipresent he cannot be omniscient there cannot be a time he can't be limited by time it's not a possibility that should be captured in his description are we together now and so he's speaking here he's saying that you did not put there was nothing but he says but now that means in experience listen carefully so prophetically from the foundations of the earth the lamb had been slain but until jesus came we had not seen that experience prophetically you have been made rich but now <clears throat> We have not seen that experience according to god's mind and his reality his economy nobody should be sick nobody should fail nobody should be deprived of experiencing the fullness of god but paul the apostle is not he's not he's not um he's not careless to omit this dimension but now but now in experience in our reality captured within our experience he says we see not yet i like the word yet if he just said we see not he would have been in error but he said we see not yet there is a process that will match prophecy and experience together and this is what this conference has come to teach that between thus saith the lord and it came to pass there is a system and we must learn what connects prophecy and experience are we together the fact that god said it does not mean it must come to pass it listen let me tell you god is not only god because his words come to pass whether his words come to pass or not he is still god you, you, you have to understand this the the inability of god's word to, co coming to pass is not enough reason to frustrate his being god there are many other qualities that still keep him as god the same way when a student fails one question out of 10 it doesn't give him an f he can still get a are we together no god does not fail don't get don't misunderstand what i'm saying but then i'm saying the 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 his word coming to pass is not the only thing that makes him god there are many reasons why he is god one of it is that the earth is the lord's and his fullness thereof he is god because he is owner he was not borrowed he was not voted he is god the bible says in the beginning not from the beginning notice he never said from the beginning god created in the beginning a space defined for the sake of your understanding but now this is what we are discussing but now we do not yet see I search the scripture and I find that I was young and now I am old. I have not seen the righteous forsaken and his seed beg for bread. But now I do not yet see that word as a reality. 
i search the word and i see that no inhabitant in zion shall say i am sick but now as it is in experience i still find out that our environment is being plagued with infirmity and all kinds of things i i find out in scripture that there is a possibility for restoration that in the economy of god men can even time can be restored he said i will restore the years not just the things i can restore time that when a woman is supposed to have one child per year or per two years and she's already eight years god can give triplets in one year and compress nine years in nine months it's a system of restoring time favor is a system incorporated in the economy of god to help men gain time are we still together But now, we do not yet see all things under his feet. So what is our assignment? Our assignment is to find out, to be like the Bereans, to be like the Magi who saw the star and began to search diligently. What meaneth these things? Our assignment is to borrow the lens and the wisdom of the Spirit to begin to search. What is the reason behind the the inactivity of god's prophetic speakings over my life and your life because you see dominion happens when the experience of the victory of christ the experience of the lordship committed to men is established here and now dominion is territorial it can be seen it should be seen are we together now but now we see not yet all things under his feet the kingdom of god is a kingdom of systems everybody says systems when god speaks he speaks on the strength of the systems that he has allocated let, let me let me put it this way let me put it this way I, I hope we're still together now please i want you to understand what i'm teaching you there are three dimensions and three levels of experiencing the power of god i think i should do it that way the power of god is what is responsible for any result experienced by men that if at any point in your christian experience you have any result that is not given for mere men to experience it was sponsored by the power of god do we agree and do we understand that means that it's not supposed to be a usual thing for a man to recover what he lost and if that recovery is captured in your experience the power of god sponsored it do you understand me it is not a normal thing for man in himself to be able to defeat principalities and powers and so if your life commands um, um commands a level of victory it is because his power has made it so just follow me let me establish something and we pray tonight the bible puts it this way apostle peter is teaching now and then he says his divine power please listen carefully his divine power in fact he starts by saying grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge so grace and peace can be multiplied through the knowledge are we together now and then he says according as his divine power so this is the agency that is responsible for results in the kingdom what is it called his divine power please everybody say his divine power you have to understand this faith is a mechanism of connecting to his divine power the agency for results in the kingdom is his divine power and the bible says that his divine power has given us all things so what gave us all things the things we are trying to access now they are sponsored by his divine power are we together his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness just hold it there so it is true that his divine power is responsible for every result that we get in this kingdom 
now there are three levels of experiencing his divine power i just need to establish this and then we'll quickly tie up what i'm teaching the first level to experience his divine power is called encounters that a personal encounter is also a platform for accessing his divine power an encounter is a supernatural experience that crystallizes the reality of a person or a thing to your spirit it doesn't have to be visionary but it must be supernatural divine encounters so when men met with god in scripture the, the residue of that encounter left them with tremendous dimensions of power number two number two the second platform for receiving and accessing his divine power is activating the laws and the principles of the kingdom there is a dimension of god's power that was vested in his laws please you have to understand this that without any personal consent to god the his divine power has been preset in his laws that by activating them you can experience a dimension of possibilities whether you believe in god the owner of the power or not there are dimensions of his power already vested in his laws that's why even if an arm robber farms the crop will not refuse to grow because his divine power the agency that makes for result was deposited in that law and the integrity of god is upon that law i don't know if we understand this it is upon this strength that unbelievers although they may refuse and deny the reality of the person christ they have mastered through through study and through experiment they have come to piece together a few laws that are responsible for certain levels of dominion and the power of god is the force behind it otherwise it will not work even the herbalist uses the power of god because no man can have any power except it is of god once have i spoken and twice have you heard that all power what happens is in the shrine is a manipulation of spiritual laws by the operation of familiar spirits they tap into the higher spiritual laws and it can afford a a level of receiving god's power but not authorized by the holy spirit that's why it does not glorify god there are other spirits the holy spirit is not the only spirit who has access to the energy and the laws of the spirit there are other spirits even human spirits can be developed enough higher than the three-dimensional realm to access some level of possibilities that's why when moses came from the presence of god and met his half brother who had now become the pharaoh of egypt and through his rod pharaoh called on janice and jambas and they did the same thing so where did that come from once have i spoken and twice have you heard that all power his divine power are we still together now so his divine power released through encounters his divine power released by activating spiritual principles by activating the laws that he has put there are people who will never call upon the name of the lord and yet they will never fail it's amazing no matter how you wish their failure they have surrounded themselves by god's own law and they have tapped into the protectiveness of his integrity by reason of surrounding themselves they keep themselves within the ambience of his laws so although they are not born again they have good families because they have kept the laws that have that have been made for peace although they will not call upon the name of the lord they continue to excel even in recession his divine power i testify i testify that your goodness is real i testify i testify that your favor is real your goodness is real i testify your goodness is real that will be someone's song after this conference listen you will stand and you will watch life like a chess 
because when you are equipped with the mysteries of the kingdom then the haphazard nature of life will suddenly square up into a synergy you will see that life is predictable as scattered as it is is because of the limitation of your perception when the word of god gives you clarity you will no longer see men like trees you will be able to see the details and the dimensions that make for dominion hallelujah are we together the third level very quickly the third level or the third dimension where we can access the power of god now listen you have to get this one is by your aligning to a vessel that has a covenant with god that allows for certain possibilities it is not always your personal faith it is not always your personal press god's desperation to see that you experience the fullness of him allowed him to give a lot of options to make sure you don't miss it and one of it is the possibilities in your life by reason of your aligning to a man who through sacrifice has made a covenant with god god called abraham alone and lot went with him lot was not called but lot followed him and lot began to receive certain levels of benevolence when lot detached from abraham it was clear that it was not his personal press that means that it is possible to be in this church and even before you learn the principles of prosperity you started prospering and you yourself you are wondering why you are breaking the rules and yet you are growing even before you came into that understanding because a man who has a covenant with god the system of the cover like the ark of noah is able to protect the animals the animals did not pray for safety they only entered the ark that belonged to noah i testify testify that your goodness is real your goodness is real i testify please sit down do you understand what i just taught so far let me tell you even if we share the grace here now some of you will run home and say i found it i found it i've, I've seen i've seen where his divine power is not finding expression in this family mm. a certain time came when a man's donkey called saul or kish and his son saul for three days brothers and sisters he searched he would have gone back and said god cannot restore but he said we have done our best with all the faith we have let us locate a man that has the eyes and the grace that can see as soon as saul's eyes looked at samuel the donkey started going back home no prayer no prophecy you make contact with a human not an angel and the donkey returns back let me tell you this challenges are not generic it depends on the grace confronting it listen to me let me say it again challenges are not generic just because you have tried and you have exhausted your spiritual knowledge should not make you build a theology around your failure to mean that that mountain is insurmountable there are graces that will trivialize that problem as if it does not exist your goodness is real i testify your goodness is real your favor is real so sit down Let, let's tie up something you won't believe that i've not even started my sermon hallelujah praise the lord we'll pray i, I will not keep us unnecessarily long we'll pray wherever we stop the spirit of the lord will help us listen sincerely speaking my goal here is not to come and excite you my goal is to make life predictable to be able to walk in the experience of dominion and then you become a true ambassador not just of the kingdom but of this church
that that a, a particular trend of results will brand the members of this church that you will not need to ask immediately you see it you say that's it is their identity when david wanted to fight saul asked him a question whose son are you where do you come from because every tribe should have an identity that represents the possibilities that they walk in hallelujah so we have we have established the fact that it is his divine power that is responsible for the possibilities that we see in the kingdom and then we have established the three platforms for receiving it that one is a personal encounter number two is you're activating the laws of the kingdom are we together now and then three your alignment to vessels that have a covenant with god there are people god has sworn to do certain things to them and god will honor them and honor you too for their sake a covenant was entered in the temple in jerusalem that anyone who faces that direction he didn't talk about the accuracy of the prayer the moment you face that direction god you are bound to answer so when they wanted to destroy daniel it was a risk to try to guess whether he would get it right he opened the window to face jerusalem to remind god that god this one now it is not just my knowledge of you i'm not ready to take this risk we are talking of death here there are dimensions that are too risky for you to tread your personal knowledge of god may be too limited and the danger that stands before you may not give you a second chance at that time you have to tap into a possibility that is bound by covenant there are men that god has vowed that anybody they pray for he will answer even if they are wrong he will answer and punish them in the secret place I hope you get what I'm saying. So our possibilities in the kingdom is not just dependent on the finished work of Christ alone. It's not just dependent on the love of God. It's dependent on these truths that I teach you. Let's go to Job chapter 38, please. Let's begin to walk these truths now. What then is the limitation? but now we do not yet see but now we do not yet see apostle i saw in my vision that god spoke to me that this would be a year of dominion i saw it in the vision that i was rising but as it is now it looks like this has been my worst year yet hold on help is coming help is coming job chapter 38 job was at a point in his life let's follow please job was at a point in his life when he was frustrated i hope you understand the context of job that job was crying crying and lamenting over the predicaments that had come upon him he gathered together his friends and they began to attempt to solve the dilemma why would a man who feared god and eschewed evil why would a man who was the richest in the in the east the great called him great are we together now he says that in the days of my youth when the secrets of the lord were upon my tabernacle then he began to describe certain things that the young men will see him and bow the old men will stand he accessed certain truths now this man had been reduced to ashes there has to be an explanation and job is saying god come and explain to me my friends have done their best but they are limited they came and sat down and their conclusion was that i sin against you there has to be something and there is a lesson there 33. Hmm. your goodness is real i testify please give us verse 33 let this be a secret oh god that will never depart from our lives these are the systems of dominion please read with me if you're a christian one two read knowest thou the ordinances of heaven question one hold on don't rush question two let's continue canst thou set 
no no you go back please just leave it 33 is the only verse knowest thou the ordinances of heaven uh-huh read on please canst thou set the dominion thereof in the earth stop this is god asking job because job began to speak arrogantly and he, in his anger god came down and said i have a question job do you know the ordinances of heaven do you know what an ordinance is the preset modus operandi of a territory or a system do you know the system by which heaven operates that i never have to leave the throne room yet no disobedience dwells in heaven do you know the principle that is responsible for the excellence and the dexterity in heaven that iniquity is judged immediately without me standing up from the throne hmm. and then he says if you know it can thou set can thou reproduce those principles within your territory have you sustained the intelligence to transfer the principles that bring order in heaven to your atmosphere but now we do not yet see knowest thou the ordinances of heaven that do you know why the worship of heaven is the way it is and have you mastered the art of replicating that possibility within your territory do you know why heaven is a place of 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 order satan is not there yet order continues to be the prevalent thing there and can you establish it that means listen if god can help us to answer this question in this conference we are ready to walk in dominion this is the diagnosis precious people of god this is why god put this conference together knowest thou the ordinances of heaven do you know the system by which a business thrives do you know a system by which men access superior dimensions of the power and the grace of god everything will look like a mystery until your understanding about it is opened that's why i told us to pray for a miracle of understanding when jesus came notice how he empowered the people he spent three and a half years teaching them the principles of the kingdom are we together now and in chapter 13 and verse 11 jesus was teaching them matthew now 13 and verse 11 jesus said to them he said they were asking him why he would speak in parables you know to the people and then when he came to them he no longer spoke in parables and then he gave them an answer he says because it is given everybody say it is given to me it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom the ordinances of heaven is what jesus calls the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven he says to them it is not given i will continue to teach this you see a mystery is a hidden code of operation it is a it's a system a modus operandi that is privy to a group of people that means that if you are outside of that circle you are not given an opportunity to understand the dynamics of that communication so i can for instance come to the house of our father your pastor and our mother can there can be a communication going on between two of them and yet um, it's unfruitful to me they can be discussing bring orange juice yet they are not talking because a system has been defined until you are a husband and wife you are not given to understand that mystery so in the kingdom there is a coded manner of operation that is given to the saints this is our advantage it is the strength of this that makes us a chosen generation and a royal priesthood the bible says we have been called into his marvelous light a body of truth that is privy to a generation that will set them apart remember as we will be learning that gentiles come to your light not to you they don't need you there's nothing so much in you it is your light and their kings never come to your light their kings are proud so they come to the brightness of your rising kings don't come to light no when they hear of your result they keep watching from afar consistency is a proof that you have gained mastery 
and the bible says no man strives for mass every man who strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully are we together the mysteries of the kingdom dominion therefore is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries and the systems of the kingdom alongside the strategy for their activation that is dominion dominion is not a wish it's not even an impartation dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the ways of god the mysteries of the kingdom then you are given the keys that can activate them then you will turn every environment to reflect heaven this is dominion the keys the keys the keys that a man can be sitting on a wheelchair please look up everybody a man can be sitting on a wheelchair bound and you can come as a man or a woman of god remember you are born again remember the same lord is rich unto all and yet you will pray for that person and call the name of jesus remember you are not a herbalist remember you are not fake remember you are in christ genuinely remember you probably have even seen jesus and yet you lay hands on that person and then the person just looks at you and even you you know that nothing is going to happen there is nothing you have done that is supposed to be wrong yet there is no result to show and the same man is taken for instance to a benihin crusade and benihin is just walking around the stage and the man gets up what is responsible for that unfair unfair scenario are we together let me give you another example that you can be in this same abel kuta and you are complaining that times are hard and there are no open doors and yet another person can come into this city and every good thing like a magnet starts looking for him what is responsible please i, I need you to understand are, are you getting blessed i'll find someone who will pray but i want you to walk out tonight with you see it is wisdom and knowledge that becomes the stability they are stabilizers fear is a product of ignorance or inaccurate understanding you don't always drive fear by casting it out you can drive fear by stabilizing your understanding hallelujah so the systems the tragedies that we see in our lives and all the things that call for the power of god they can and should be solved on the strength of the truths that we know are we together let me tie up something please three or four gentlemen just rush come here quickly 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 let's celebrate them as they come any three or four gentlemen just come stand in a straight line here i like to teach illustratively because it will help you to understand thank you sas thank you sas just stand everybody watch this the kingdom is a compendium of infinite possibilities that the dealings of men with god does not allow for limitations are we together now now don't worry whether it has not yet been captured in our lives that's why we're here in this conference remember that your personal experience is not enough to create a verdict around god god forbid but if i die of sickness today it does not change god being a healer my personal experience about god is too small a reason god has he has a track record that is more than the lifetime of one man so my limitation is too small a reason to give god a new inferior identity his word has been tested seven times so whether or not the things that we are teaching have been captured in your life yet it doesn't matter your assignment is to believe that this possibility still exists are we together now watch this let's call this restoration let's call this financial prosperity let's call this um supernatural empowerment by the spirit let's call this speed all of these possibilities are present in the dealings of god with men now the dimension that is captured in your life or not captured notwithstanding 
is that it is true that in the dealings of god with men these possibilities exist are we together now yes so my life can be in need of restoration and i read in the bible that god is able to restore but i do not understand the systems that have been put in place to make my life capture that dimension let me tell you the tragedy of prolonged failure it will force you to build a theology around it and sadly it can even cause you to begin to raise other people after the order of your limitation to mean that god is unable that's why i was I, i'm so blessed by the heart of the man of god that you can allow people to expand to the possibilities that exist you know that this is one of the challenges in the body of christ we trivialize dimensions we have been unable to capture in our lives so if i've done my best and this word of knowledge thing is not working i just make it look like it's not important no no just because the experience is in my life there are people who like 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 um our daddy shared will hate every blessed man do you know why because they secretly tried to to prosper they did it quietly and i mean the way the thing didn't work they tried again and it didn't work and then they just conclude that look this thing doesn't work and so every time they see another man's result it reminds them that they don't have an excuse and that reaction is what is coined as criticism it's important to love critics because you have to understand put yourself in their shoes it's not easy success has a side effect <laughs> are we together now look at this there are people who your prayer is oh god prosper me i love you i know that money will not take your place in my life my pastor has taught me already to love you more than the things of this world so lord it, it is not the fear of leaving you i just need to prosper and god says this dimension is available and my benevolence my divine power so this is a possibility in my economy i prosper men i don't only use them i don't only make them um born again and filled with the holy spirit i don't just use them i'm a benevolent king yet your entire lifetime may not be able to capture this possibility there are some other people that are praying oh god i'm a man of god i want to see results in my life i want to see results in my ministry i want a superior investment of the hand and the power of the spirit upon my life i want access to revelation insight miracles signs and wonders and god will tell you this is a possibility in my dealings but you see just knowing that it is a possibility is more frustrating than ignorance that means to know that something is supposed to be in your life is like i'm hungry and then you grill turkey and just keep it in front of me and create a system to ensure i keep seeing it but never taste it versus someone who is sick in the hospital who does not even know that anything is around it. you can imagine that is the experience of many believers and that is the seed for compromise because when you are aware that's why it's important and 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 and, and let me borrow on the grace of our father to just talk to some of us who are men of god here it is important to trust god for the grace dimension of every revelation we carry so that we not only propose we can demonstrate the reality of the things that we have otherwise we'll continue to propose dimensions in the kingdom and stare the appetites of the people like the tree in the experience of jesus green leaves but no fruit and then when they come i know god can bless i know god can heal i know god can lift i know god can give a job i know that god brought bread in samaria overnight but where is that god today but now we do not yet see all things ah my god somebody will stand after this conference listen you will watch doors open and you you yourself you won't know where to start the testimony from listen what i tell you is true it's not just a blind prophecy what you are receiving there are two things happening to you you are receiving spiritual information but much more than that there is the engracing that is behind it remember the spirit enters you when you are spoken to 
and it can set you up on your feet so that by tonight it is possible that a man you have been trying to reach for five years and you are not able to reach that man and by the end of the night he calls you and then you don't just say you are lucky no something was engaged in the realm of the spirit and the result showed it are we together dominion systems i'll stop here so that we'll pray i hope that by tomorrow i'll be able to share with us specifics as it relates to certain dimensions of our lives but it's sufficient for us to know that there is an explanation behind every tragedy that in spite of the fact that the truths of god's word reveal that certain possibilities should be captured in our lives if they are not yet captured the problem is not from god there is a requisite level of knowledge there is a requisite level of knowledge psalms 82 and verse 5 says they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says but have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high then verse 7 says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes there are things that if you do not know it reduces you to a mere man your immunity is in your understanding are we together there is something you can know that no weapon fashion against you shall prosper you can know it just in theory and find yourself becoming a victim of every attack but there is what you can know in reality and you know you are secured there is what you can know that you can program i i pray that i pray that god grants the grace and we have the time tomorrow um i would like to share i hope that among the dominion systems god will grant grace let me teach a bit on favor that is very powerful favor is not for people who want to be rich favor is for anybody who truly wants time to serve god <laughs> the the system of this world makes it such that even your lifetime is not enough to solve your problems and give you time to spend on your assignment your lifetime is too small the, the level of transformation and the result that they bring will will exhaust your lifetime and you will not have the time to focus on the things that matter and so god interjected this possibility in his dealings with men where you can gain time and have access to the things that are the dreams of men to allow you the time because all we really have is time a dying man does not ask for more money a dying man does not ask for more education he will ask for more time ask hezekiah the request of a dying man is time that means whatever steals your time poverty is not an attack on you it's an attack on time are we together delay is not an attack on you it's an attack on time what you call your destiny is god's purposes through the time he has given you anything that attacks your time is a real attack anything that attacks your time really attacked you when jesus came he redeemed time three and a half years and he was done lo i come in the volume of the book he said i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day you don't walk any time you want there is a time are we together if you build a house at 60 praise the lord but it's not a testimony that's a sign of mercy it's not a testimony if you get born again at 70 years it's, it's not good news we thank god you are making it in heaven but i mean you, you have not you have not maximized your stay what satan hates is time and understanding and passion for god no you can't have three like that so you prosper but you will make sure your soul does not prosper and he says i wish above all things that ye be in health and prosper even 
so when satan wants to bless you he transacts business with your soul give me your soul and i will give you everything in time the commodity is not products and services is your soul that's what he told jesus bow to me let me have access to your soul and i will give you everything you try to be blessed and let satan hear your prayer lord you know what i will do for the kingdom you know that by the time i have a company for instance of my own lord you know that 30 percent of the entire estate will be dedicated in kingdom advance satan will program something to distract you do you know that in in egypt while they began to pray and advocate for an exodus take us from this land we want an exodus what did pharaoh do he said it's because we are giving you free straw the remaining time you have that's what you are using to seek god so he said occupy them stop giving them straw so that they will not even have time again to call on god every time the devil sees that the saints want to rise he will manipulate time and do something in it and it will reduce you back imagine a family praising the lord on a tuesday a weekday you just decided to stake out time and worship and roll on your carpet most people will look at you and say you you want to die of hunger satan has done something to time that has destroyed men our generation says no time no time no time no time we don't have time to seek him we don't have time to worship we don't have time to know him we don't have time to study and intimacy is a product of time you need to understand that when we talk about dominion it's not just a carnal obsession for prosperity or power or all of these things it's a system that grants us access to gain time so that we can do much for the kingdom within the time that is allocated are we together now what dimension is in the dealings of god but not yet in your life what dimension apostle have tried to apply for a job even god knows i agree and i bless god for you but what if i told you there was something in the economy of god that 21 days is too far for you to get a job you see that chances are you will even feel offended because you will say master we have toiled all night just because you toiled all night should not make jesus powerless he still says cast your net your toiling does not change my power let me leave us with a word tonight please roll away that stone that stone that you used to cover the grave that they put lazarus roll it because something is about to come out of that grave there are situations that you have concluded in your life you said look um, I just thank God. I already know that this marriage, I made a mistake and that's it. It's going to be like that for life. No, roll away that stone. When Jesus shows up, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, he makes prophecy become your experience. It no longer becomes what you said or what he said or what was in the word, but it now becomes your experience there are certain people here who have even concluded that you can never walk in certain levels of grace and in the anointing you've done your best you fasted you've prayed and you've just concluded that god just selected a few people roll that stone and watch what god does in your life that they will look at you and say is saul also a prophet when did this happen and you say in this dominion conference i just came home i was invited i sat quietly and as soon as i went back home i just greeted my man i said mommy how are you i came back from a conference and just because of that handshake she had 10 miracles before going to bed and even you you are wondering what what happened what did i receive dominion as a product of your understanding knowing the ways of god even the anointing you see this anointing you see is it doesn't just function haphazardly no no there are laws there are systems there are principles favor has principles sir one of the greatest needs of believers second only to their passion for god 
is the need for the favor of god upon their lives many people i submit to you have not experienced favor what they have experienced is breakthrough not favor what many people call favor is breakthrough favor is not favor until it is repeated if it happened only once is breakthrough <laughs> ah. do you believe what you have heard tonight so finally i can know that i found a way that in this conference i found a way lord so speed can come to my life i got born again at 30 years and now i'm 50 i thought that time has gone but you are now letting me know that years can be restored that you can do something before the end of 2019 i i almost gave up and now you are bringing me good news what is good about the news if it does not bring dominion what is good about the news if your limitations remain if your limitations veto the power of God, what then is the excellency of his lordship? Hmm. Praise the Lord. That someone who has not been able to go to school, you've written jam so many times, 10 times, 11 times, and then the power of God now comes to assist you. And you will see a result that you too, you know. You go back to God and say, God, this is your result. Oh, come and go to the university because this one is not what I, I know what I wrote. <laughs> ah, his divine power. 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 I've been barren for years. I know, but his divine power. Listen, while you are looking for a child, God wants to give you a nation. Listen. When you give birth to one child and because of that one child a businessman you have been trying to see for five years comes to visit you is that a child you, you get back to more than a child with all your adulthood you could not call that man and a child calls three kings to come and bring gold frankincense and myrrh. is that a child who would have called the attention of the magi god will not just give you a child oh god give me a certificate and god says i will give you but can i put something on it for you oh god give me a ministry and god says no i, I want to give you influence over systems and territories where your name becomes a key to the destinies of men it's not only at the mention of Jesus' name even your own name as they mention it doors too can open it's not demeaning the name of Jesus. There are men on earth who are gatekeepers. Their names are keys. There are some enemies that are not castable. You can't cast them. God will make favor in their heart for you. That's how you pass that gate. There are people that are not castable when a man's ways pleases the lord there are some enemies that he makes to favor you how do you cast pharaoh when even god saw him fit to have a dream no other person could have the dream and god still used him how do you cast cyrus there are men that are not castable when god wants you to penetrate through them god will grant favor these are the systems of the kingdom are we ready to pray we'll just pray please i like our hearts to be open in this conference i believe speakers after speakers have come and and building up and the conference is about wrapping up right I know many of you are here and all that is in your mind now is power oh god let this thing come relax don't worry uh, when when you pour oil on a closed container you waste it the oil must be the container must be opened and prepared when the woman said i had nothing except the oil was listening to the conversation you are calling me nothing the oil was listening to the conversation between the woman and the prophet 
and the prophet said go and borrow vessels you don't borrow oil but you borrow vessels he says borrow not a few that's what god is doing expanding you so that when the grace comes that before next week sunday you will sit there in front of the church waiting for the church to be open and say why are you here i have to, i have a testimony i have a testimony i have a testimony I, are you so desperate i have a testimony you just hear it first are we blessed we are going to pray so is it okay if we take five minutes to pray we are really going to pray oh. praise the lord please rise up on your feet they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the earth are out of course but have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high where you are standing i'd like you to join hands with someone and i'd like you to pray and declare enough is enough this dimension this level of life i declare that enough is enough lord it is time to arise it is time to shine are there people of prayer Shada branda kasada balaka tosha predegedesh kapara do sata branda katosha labra katas karusa zia kata praha sadegeda balas krato sada barata kata balada ba we are contending for higher levels in life higher levels in the spirit higher levels in life higher levels of ministry higher levels of prosperity higher levels of increase higher levels of the power of god higher levels of influence are you praying that the doors that have refused to open this is a conference that will open them up is someone praying that the dimensions in my life and your life the dimensions that have defied the power of god Few minutes and we're done for tonight. Sale kaparo katosi araba. Pray, Lord. I insist. My family must arise. My destiny must arise. Kaparo toshia. That dimension of grace that I have sought and sought and sought for years in prayers and fasting the Davidic order of psalmistry it must arise in my life pray Please pray. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb, glory 
to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hold on, please. Please, just permit me. I thought we'd do this tomorrow, but I'm already seeing the angels of the Lord in this place. Let me just speak to a few people and we're done. I'm seeing a grace for speed. Listen carefully. Please listen. A grace for speed is coming on a few people. And please listen. Whether or not you are an usher for the purpose of this prayer, please, I, I apologize if I break any protocol. But you are going to see people running by the Spirit out of their control. I want you to hold them and just guide them here. Can I pray? Because that grace must come upon someone. This, this limitation, this limitation. I stretch my hands. I'm praying now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let that grace and that anointing right now, I stretch my hands. Let it fall upon us, many people. Bring them out, please. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive that grace. Receive that grace. Speed. 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 Please bring them. Help them. Whether you are an usher or not, please help them. Be your brother's keeper. If there's someone under the anointing there, just help them. Just a few minutes and we are done. Speed! I declare no delay again. I come by the road of a higher priesthood. I shift you by the Spirit. Step into a new dimension. Step into a new level. Step into a new level. I release speed. The highest praise to the King. We bow down. We bow down the deepest worship to the King. We give you the highest, the highest praise to the King. We're rounding up. I apologize. I, I'm just ministering as the Lord is revealing to me. The Lord is showing me that there are families here right now as I'm speaking that I'm seeing like chains on people's feet and the lord is saying these are limitations upon families but right now i'm declaring by the power of the holy spirit i command a release now i can help them please help them my god i command a release now by the power of the holy spirit i command a release now the bible says now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty how else will you know that he came? How else will you know that he's changing you? Hallelujah. In one minute, if you will allow, please, whatever must leave your life in this conference, please open your mouth and cry it as a prayer. Whatever must leave your life. Lord, I stand under the grace of our Father. Are you praying? Everything that must leave your life as a testament to the entire. Please hold the lady. Hold her. Usher, hold her, please. Shabakata barakato shabrende gedea. We're rounding up. We're rounding up. You came for a conference to meet Jesus. It's a conference that speaks dominion over the works of your hands. Dominion over the things that you are involved with. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The man of God that ministered in songs, I don't know if he's coming here tomorrow, but can I pray for you? I, I don't know you, I've never met you, but your life is about to change. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing three things. One, I'm seeing a plane taking you out of this nation. I'm seeing you in UK. The Lord is taking you to UK to minister. I'm seeing you go. I'm planning to go. You are planning to go to UK. I, I don't know, that's what I'm saying. I'm seeing you in UK by the Spirit of God. Number two, I'm seeing a strange dimension of the prophetic grace and the healing grace. These twin dimensions. 
your your worship will take a strange level of the prophetic this is what i'm seeing and this will spill over to your team and i'm seeing a gentleman he's he's a new i don't know if he's it's like a new drama that god is bringing for you i want to pray for you so is it okay that i just speak over his life and i will pray for you and you're, you're a guest who i believe and i i don't mean to embarrass you i hope you're not embarrassed at all i just want to well um I, I pray for you and i pray for them we have to wrap up but the lord just i don't know if you come tomorrow but i'm seeing this this man i don't know him i'm seeing him for the first time but the kind of grace that i see that is coming upon this man of god is going to be a grace a prophetic dimension a very strong prophetic dimension and then a strong healing anointing i pray for you sir in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god let that grace and anointing is coming on your hands as i speak to you in jesus name step into that level of grace step into that dimension and i pray for your team you are experiencing the hand of god in the name of jesus christ please bring for me the lady that shouts under the anointing now loud to the hearing of everybody the power of god is coming on a lady right now please bring the person hallelujah glory to the lamb glory to the father you are seated on the throne hallelujah glory to the lamb glory to the father you are seated on the throne the lord says i should speak to you my dear for your family he said remember not the former things nor consider the things of old god is losing you that's what god is saying there is a chain that has held your family for decades and the lord is saying you are being set free listen please listen please listen whether you are a member of this church or not please tomorrow is not just the issue of this service is god coming to a city to set men free please whatever you will do to bring your loved ones and tell them look 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 i, I don't mean to dishonor any man's ministry or whatever please don't misunderstand me but i'm telling you this this is a visitation god is using this church and this conference to visit this land there are people you know who should be here while god is ministering to others you are saying ah, i wish this person were here please even if it means using your car to help and carry them to say come i will give you free bus transport that tomorrow you are here even if you are going to sit on the roof tomorrow because there's no space it's better to sit there and receive there are kairos moments in our lives where if you have the discernment to see that this is god's visitation don't be like jacob in chapter 28 of genesis that the lord was in this place and i knew not father we thank you for tonight we bless you for your spirit we thank you for your hand i pray for everyone under the anointing who has come out for various reasons I declare that for whatever miracle it is that the Lord separated you I establish it now in the name of Jesus Amen. that lady wearing yellow and black something is leaving her chest there is a chest condition that God is healing out of this very lady with yellow and black I declare I'm seeing something that looks like a shadow just coming out from her chest I don't know what chest related issue you have but you are being healed right now you are being healed right now by the power of the holy spirit a number of you will go back checking yourselves and you'll find out that the infirmities that you came here with are completely gone by the spirit i trust that within the time we have tomorrow we'll have the opportunity to just speak lord we honor you for tonight we declare that jesus alone be glorified we thank you for what you are doing we thank you for our father 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 Thank you for our Father. 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 Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.